Hey guys, you're watching my real life vlogs. Welcome back, welcome back. Today's vlog is a part two to an eight day trip to Egypt for my dad's 64th birthday. If you missed part one, tap the link so you can see the beginning of this short travel series. Today, I'm sharing days five through eight with details on our final days in Egypt with the crew, our experience getting back home to the States. I'm also sharing souvenirs, a trip recap, and some tips for first time travelers to Egypt. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, okay, I just put on my lashes. Y'all, we are on our way to dinner. I am late. We late a little bit, like 15 minutes because the girl trying to put on makeup and stuff. And I needed a shower. These lashes, you know, you gotta hold them until they dry. And these are the big ones. These are the ones my sister gave me. Kay gave me these. Anyway, I put my little headpiece on. A little choker, I had this for a long time. And then this dress from Fashion Nova that I've had as well for a long time. And then my little bracelet that I showed y'all. Put, I went ahead and put that on. And this is how I look in the dress. See, it's so comfortable, you know? So we're just gonna wear this. And then Anthony has, what you say you got on, Anthony? Like AB said, I put that shit on. He got this from the Arab uh, shop by our house. So we bought this local. I love that um, cover up on him or whatever. It's like a one size fits all type thing. It's so nice. Y'all try to do like a little Egyptian makeup trick with the, with the liner that goes all the way over. Girl, I don't know. It was rushed as hell. It took me 10 minutes to do my makeup. Okay, let's go. All right, some traditional Egyptian food. Let's get into it. Some of the stuff looks familiar from other places we stopped and ate at. I actually tried one of those already. And then this is some kind of bread pudding type dessert. We got some lentil soup and then we got some fruit soup with the lemon and the cheesecloth. They said that's a good compliment for that. So let's get into it. You talking to him? Talking to you. Oh, oh talk to the camera. Oh, okay. I need to FaceTime. You can't FaceTime me. Oh, no. But I do need to FaceTime them if I can later. I told them to call me. Because they're the ones that work. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Has pasta mixed in with it and lentils. <clears throat> That'd be cool if they had it like that. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it that? Let's go. Yeah, I, I, I should play. I came in. I knew you were going to crack I knew you were going to crack it. I would have fell out. I would have fell out. I would have fell out. <laughs> Alright y'all, apparently this is some of the best cuisine Egypt has to offer and I must say I'm still not impressed. When I eat it, it just kind of leaves me wanting Indian food or Arabic food or even Ethiopian food. There's just something missing and the fact that they keep putting pasta in the rice, I'm just, it's just not sitting right with me. But I do feel like I gave it a fair shot. <laughs> Be 
one, two. It's my age. Cheese. <laughs> baby camera. Seeing my wife pulling me. <laughs> we'll change to go out, right? Yep. Let's go. All right, we're about to change clothes real quick. I'm just gonna throw on one of those gowns. And then we're gonna go into the city of Aswan. From the window, it looks like it's cracking. It looks like it's cracking. Let's check it out. You ready, Anthony? All right, Look, looking like a Palestinian. <laughs> uh, we're going out town. What's who? What Ash. What I got, Ash. Ash. Okay, when, when, when you want to come back, your shirt is ready. Okay. Okay, just a minute Okay. Y'all, that's Sam. That's the shop owner, the guy who was freaking out the other day when we were on top of the boat and the guys were throwing the merchandise over. Every time we left the ship, he wanted to know where we were going and why because he thought we were going to be spending our money with other vendors. He is so greedy. <laughs> we spent thousands of dollars with him. I remember. Okay. okay. See, he, he good. Good memory. What kind of tea is that? Yeah, see, get it's some kind of mint. Mint tea. Mint tea. Mint tea. He's where, where very nice. Is? Oh. He had to bring it out. He, I don't think he heard yeah. you. <laughs> Can I have one on it? Yeah, I do. Well, I'm gonna, I just taste this. Taste it. My daughter, let me taste that. You gonna taste it? Yeah, let me taste it. Careful, it's hot, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, told you. <laughs> oh, they they get bad. I tucked my brains in and everything. Where are they keep picking up? I'm new being. Like Alex, you bring one? Me if I'm Egyptian uh, or Nubian. I bring you one? No, no, no. Want some alcohol? <laughs> Yay! Finally got, finally caught up with her. <laughs> Coming home from the Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Wednesday. They only get me on Wednesday, child. Oh man. I'm FaceTiming her while we're in the market, uh, buying stuff. We keep on buying stuff. Even the kids be selling stuff out here, girl. So they be so sweet. <laughs> These kids, the other day, they were kissing me on my arm. Uh, yeah, they were so cute. They were so little. They were like six years old, and they were like walking with us and just kissing us. Yeah, yeah. They wanted money and stuff. <sighs> but yeah, girl. But anywho, she said she got to get going. She can't um hang around too long. But she just wanted to check on us and stuff. Yeah, dad. Where did dad ran off? Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Children. <laughs> Children. Hi, mommy. Children. Hi, mommy. Hi. Children. <laughs> I zookeeper. 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 Owl. <laughs> hey. Say hi, mommy. 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 Hi, mommy. Children. Good morning. Today we are in Aswan. What does it mean? The name of the city. Much bigger than Luxor. Was the main source of the Grand Stone Age. Hello, 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 Hello,
Oh. <laughs> it's my birthday. Welcome to the famous Temple of Filet. This is the place I intentionally decided to shoot my pregnancy announcement, which was a mixture of photos and a video, which you may have seen by now. I really wanted the announcement to be special, and of all the sites we were expected to visit on this trip, I knew this one was it. It was the perfect backdrop because it was once a place of worship created for ancient Egyptian goddesses, including that of Hathor, which was a solar deity representing femininity, love, and fertility, or motherhood. It's one of the more beautifully constructed and preserved ancient ancient temple complexes that I've seen since we've been in Egypt. Um, hands down, it was just absolutely stunning. It's situated on this small island, completely surrounded by Aswan waters and vibrant flowers. Super pretty, you guys. I consider it a sprawling allure. It was super stunning. We were only here for a short while before heading to our next tour stop, which is the unfinished obelisk. <laughs> But it was a sex is it, right? The whole thing? It has to be one piece. Wow. This is like what someone's left to take it back. Right. Oh, they abandoned it. Yeah. That's why it says unfinished. We made a stop at this granite quarry to see the famous unfinished obelisk. So the deal is this, you guys. It's evident that the ancient people had started the process of carving out this structure from the granite because they were going to have it moved to a location, probably a temple or something. But in the process, it got cracked, as you can see here. So they left it in order to start on another one. You see, the crack rendered it no good because they needed this thing to be one solid piece. Now, these figurines they were selling on site represent what the obelisk looks like in small scale. But in real life, it's a towering structure right similar to the Washington Monument how they were even gonna move this thing is more of a QTNA than them abandoning it if you ask me and then how were they getting ready to move this big old thing That's what he just said they, what? they used wood to pull, to pull it out to get it to the get it to the river put it on the, uh, <laughs> like a barge mm -hmm. and went down river with it what so it cracked when they were dealing with it so they left it and said let's just find another piece the crack is uh crack is right there. See the cracks in it. I don't know how many tons this is. How are they gonna lift that up and transport it? All right, I'm getting a little vertigo up here. <laughs> the wind blowing, I'm scared. I'm gonna fall. It's like a giant casket. Yeah. It was quite the hike to get up here too, y'all. I'm up here like huffing and puffing, but it's necessary to get that heart rate up. Are these, what kind of dogs are these? There's another one up there. Yes, I so let's, walk, let's walk back this way. They go in this area. I see them dogs chasing some other dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, we are back in the cabin on the ship and everything. Everybody's starting to get ready to kind of like want to go home and stuff. <laughs> Me and my dad were cracking up because we said this. We were like an eight day trip. By day six, people are going to be like, all right, you know, and then the last, tw you know, 24 to 48 hours are pretty rough for people, especially when people have like really busy lives that they have to get back to and stuff. So, um, but we're having a great time, but it's just like, you know, all the hustle and bustle, all the tours, all the coming and going, waking up early, lunchtime is this time, dinner time, you know, it can kind of, can kind of get to you, but we are still having a great time. Uh, the last uh, couple stops uh, you guys saw, I didn't go to one of the stops that they went to. They went to this like um, aromatherapy shop and I was just like, oh, I don't want to go in there. So me and Anthony, we just stayed in the van along with some of the kids. And then the next stop was what I just showed you guys when we went to see the granite and stuff. That was pretty cool. But here's the thing, let's talk about the Temple of Filet. So I didn't really vlog when I was there. I did go there um, for the purpose of shooting content and I'll never be doing that when I go on trips. Y'all know that about me. Like I just bring y'all along with whatever is already happening, but I don't usually like plan out shoots and things like that but this particular time i wanted to specifically shoot photos and video content for my pregnancy reveal um you guys here on youtube are finding out in a different way than they'll find out on instagram so yeah i was shooting the instagram stuff and it was so much fun y'all we had to walk around for a bit and like scout the place we had gone on google at first to kind of get an idea of like the layout of the temple 
and it was some areas where I'm like that would be dope to shoot but I was so worried that there would be too much foot traffic to get it done so I actually wanted to shoot on like those front steps of the temple but y'all it was like there were people sitting down and resting there were people with canes you know like the elderly and stuff kind of sitting and I was not gonna ask people to move are you kidding so we couldn't do it there but we found another little area over to the side that was just as pretty I don't know why people weren't over there. It was a beautiful view. It was by it showed the water. It showed like the big rocks in the off in the distance. There were boats going by. There was nice tropical plants. I'm like, we're doing it here. So we got to get the content done, and I really, really love the way it came out, y'all. I, I believe you guys will have seen it at the beginning of the video anyway. So you guys will already know what I'm talking about um, by the time you get to this part of the vlog. But yeah, I wanted to shoot there because the Temple of Philae was like, I guess, built for the goddess Isis and um Hathor, Hathor, and specifically the goddess Hathor uh, is a goddess of like, you know, representing love and motherhood. And I was like, oh my God, that would be perfect. You know, when I did the little research in the beginning, putting together the itinerary, I'm like, oh my God, that would be so perfect to um, shoot there as, as a backdrop, you know, because I was just going to shoot like anywhere and just, you know, tell you guys I was pregnant, but I'm like, that's perfect. The perfect messaging. So uh, that's why we chose that location. So it did have some significance, right? Yeah, and I was able to make that announcement in the motherland. So awesome. But anyway, <laughs> y'all, I had to rush and do my makeup this morning because I had to be ready by six o'clock in order to head out. So I had to do my makeup and everything before we left. And I, this bathroom in here has really bad lighting. So y'all, my makeup is not all that good. And when I was taking the pictures, I could see some flaws of like application. There were only a few, so good for that. I did a pretty good job, but you know, these were flaws that I would have easily caught had I had I had the right type of lighting. So I'm really disappointed in uh, the makeup application, but you know what? You know, it came out okay for the pictures, but I don't know how it looked in person. When I came back here and I looked in the mirror with the natural light coming in, I was like, wait a minute, I have some places that needed to be um, blended out a little bit better, but it was dark this morning when we were getting dress like it was like 5 30 in the morning so it was like still kind of dark so i didn't have any natural light when i was getting ready but we made it work and then i had my dress on underneath this because i didn't want to walk around with a see-through dress so i just kind of wore this over the dress it's just really long um you know like long moo moo type of thing so i had this on over it and then when i got done shooting i just shimmied out of it and took it off and left this on and i got my sneakers on too so super comfy Underneath this though, I do have on this sort of um, bodysuit thing that I'm wearing. It looks like shapewear, but it, you know, that dress was see-through, like 100% see-through. So I had to have something underneath. So it's just like this kind of thing, you know. I think with that dress, for the purpose of a photo shoot, you could have just done like a, a full coverage bra and full coverage panty and would have been just fine. It would have given like the Sierra Beyonce, you know, sheer dress uh, vibes. But because I was out in public and not necessarily a private photo shoot, I was like, let me cover up a little bit more just because, um, you know, we're in a different country and I don't want to offend people. I just really was worried about that. So this did the job. Um, but like I said, I think you could have got away with it either way. That dress, I also, if you guys like it, I ordered it on Amazon. It's like so pretty for like a maternity shoot. So if you guys need one, I'll put the link because it was cheap and accessible. But yeah, girl, when I was shooting the content, people were looking like they didn't even have no shame. People were just stopping and getting comfortable and like being like, I'm watching you do this shoot, like the whole fucking thing. It was crazy, but I didn't mind because people were being really like, um, nice about it and like I wasn't getting any crazy looks if I had gotten a crazy look I would have been like why don't you just walk away you know but people were like how cute is this you, your your belly is so cute this is such a nice concept for you to shoot this oh my god it's gonna come out amazing you're doing a great job you know it was like positive vibe so I didn't mind we're about to rest up uh, for a few minutes here before lunch lunch is actually in half an hour we are starving but we're just gonna drink some water and chill until we go and nourish ourselves and then we have some more activities planned for the rest of the day so you guys stick around Exactly. 
they made that for the boats which are having big cargo of gold and coming from, coming from Nubia to Cairo. Here we are back in the river on the motorboat. This is our Nubian village tour. Check out what happened. I was calling them pirates because they scared the mess out of us. They just swam up out of nowhere, but these were the cutest pirates ever and they were serenading us. They do this to get tips, so we did tip them. Tell, tell them where we're going, Dad. Uh, we headed, we headed to the uh, Nubian, Nubian uh, neighborhood and market, local market, this particular neighborhood. It's giving, it's giving Bahamas, Caymans. Anthony, you excited to check it out? <laughs> they got us on the pirate plank, <laughs> getting off of there. It's just a adventure at every turn. We stopped in one of the marketplaces and we were served some traditional Nubian tea and appetizers. Not everyone was a fan because one of the dishes was kind of fermented, but I actually liked it. The mint tea seemed to be kind of a constant, which I was a huge fan of. Uh, we got to play with this little baby uh, crocodile or alligator, I'm not sure. Some of the folks uh, enjoyed the experience, some of the folks got really scared. I didn't want no parts because the thing didn't smell too good to me. Out of all of the hands-on sort of activities that we've done so far, I would say this one people enjoyed the most. Um, the girls were really into the henna and it just seemed a lot more immersive than some of the things we've done before. Anthony wants to go to the roof. So to the roof we go. How is it up there guys? I figured that's what I'm looking forward to that view. That view from up top. Come on you can do it Rambo. So colorful I was telling Anthony it reminds me of the Bahamas. All the colors. Oh you came up. Yeah, I'm like, let's get, let's, let's, see, let's see the view up here. Yes. You like the view, Bryce? No, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> what did you think of the view, Adams? It's awesome. It's awesome. I didn't know they had hay on top of the, whatever these sticks are on top of the roof. Mm -hmm. Bunch of stuff fell down on it. Some getting rain. Yeah. All these roofs, like those look like they're made out of mud. They're just, they're just to keep the sun out, up down in there. Mm -hmm. That's all there is up there. There's pipes up under there, though. Oh, there are? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doobie houses in concrete, though. Or stucco. I like oh, in the market. I love this market. I'm trying to adjust the lighting, get it just right, y'all. But um, I really like the pace of this market. Hi. <laughs> Have a look. These are our camera guys. Have a look also. Camera guys they are getting some good footage for us. <laughs> they said they don't want no credit either, so I ain't gonna say their name. They say don't say their name. See, this is a crocodile smoking the hookah. Yeah, the smoke was coming out of that thing. The, the <laughs> incense. That's clever. <laughs> oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, if you take a trip like this, make sure you bring your own toilet paper with you at all times, like just stick it in your backpack or something, because with these busy markets, uh, you're gonna need to go to the bathroom. I know I was going a lot, and they do charge you to use the bathroom in some places, and they almost all charge to give you toilet paper. It's only like a couple dollars, so just make sure you have singles on hand for emergencies. Oh, they all the way down? Oh yeah. Anthony, you wanna check it out? <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, whoa, let them through. Majestics, let the Majestics through. Oh, they're so beautiful. Look at them. I look here. 
They just walk in like, you know, just a nice spring day. He said, this is my something. I love it. Yes, who? He said, this is my something. He's showing me his somethings. He's got something. This is my size. This is, this is, these are his things. I'm trying to find something for Martina because I know she likes, you know, figurines and stuff like that. Do you have magnets? Collected his sand. They look all different from these different places. This is one, one is from the Giza Pyramid. And, um, this look, these look like drugs. Dad, you might you might have some trouble coming through customs. They're gonna be like they're gonna be like we gotta test these. I'm putting that in the luggage. Yeah. I already thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> this was a great idea. After I all. Different colors. All right, y'all. Hey, hey, it's the next day, and this is our last day in Egypt. So we took a flight this morning really early. I wasn't vlogging because it was just a lot of hustle and bustle, but we flew back to Cairo from Aswan, and it was a pretty decent flight. So we got back here, got to another hotel. So we're staying at the Le Passage this time, and this is a hotel that's like a straight up resort style. So they have like a casino, a pool, and like all this stuff, shops and all this stuff but the casino is down because they actually have not come back from COVID. So they're still down, I guess, financially. So they haven't even rebooted the casino. So that's not available. My dad is very disappointed because he is a gambler. We're just going to find something else. There is another hotel um, 20 minutes away that does have a casino that may be open, but um, I don't think dad wants to do that. And y'all, because we're here during Ramadan, there's a lot of like restrictions on certain activities certain like nightlife activities and things so even the nightclubs like there is no night scene right now during ramadan and which i totally understand so we're just gonna be chilling in the hotel we may or may not go to the pool what you think uh may or may not go to the pool um i did bring so i didn't i don't have any maternity bathing suits right now so i don't even have a bathing suit but i did bring like this um bodysuit thing which i could just put that on it just looks like an athletic you know swimming thing i could wear that if we decide to go but anywho we are about to get ready to go to lunch and then do the boat ride thing for my dad's birthday but y'all i'm a little disappointed because um we got back we got to our rooms so late and even now we're still waiting for our luggages that no one wants to like change into like their egyptian like cute stuff and then wear that which is what i kind of envisioned i thought we'd all have on like our Egyptian, you know, garb and then, you know, dad had his like little traditional hat. Anthony had his head wrap and I was going to wear like my head wrap and we were going to, you know, do the whole thing out on the water. But nobody wants to do it now because we got like 15 minutes to get back out. So we're just all going to be like celebrating my dad's birthday in like our airport clothes. So I'm kind of disappointed in that because I thought we were going to be like taking pictures and all that. Now it's just going to just literally be lunch and then whatever you know but that's fine pivot gang pivot gang we gotta pivot gotta let go of the hopes and dreams that you had if it's not gonna work out you gotta pivot you gotta just release you know control because if you don't you'll mull in it it'll ruin your mood and you'll just be an unpleasant person and we ain't trying to be that okay so i wanted to let y'all know the room is so much better let me turn the camera around the room is so much better than the hilton golf club we were at um, when I walked in, I could smell the cleanliness. I told Anthony, like, yep, I can smell it. It's clean, but um, it's more spacious. Let me see what the bathroom looks like. It's a little bit more spacious. And yeah, you know, like the, the shower looks cleaner. I don't see crud. I don't see old feels, you know? I like when I see shiny metal, right? My navel is sticking out there. Y'all, I have a herniated navel situation from my first pregnancy, so um we're just dealing with that i just try to like um, work on like engaging my core in the proper place so that i don't cause like more of a hernia than i already have so i'm usually just trying to like 
engage the inner core. So it's like um, the muscles around the navel are like as strong as they can be. Does that make sense? Um, but I'm probably gonna talk to my doctor about where we go from here with that situation. But anyway, yeah. So they're bringing the luggages around for us now. So we'll, there it is, you wanna grab it, huh? And then we're gonna go eat at this Islamic Honey. restaurant. And we actually put in our orders in advance so we don't have to wait for that, which I am happy about. Y'all, their process for dropping off the luggage is to just put all of it on one cart and go from room to room with everyone from our group and people just pick which luggages they that belong to them. Um, not the most succinct <laughs> style of operating, but um, you know, we just been winging it, so. All right, let me catch y'all in a second. It's time to pee. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Oh, this is very nice. But you say you don't have Pepsi. I don't have my Pepsi. She said she don't. She said you guys don't have Pepsi. Just Coke. All right, the toilet is in here. I want to show y'all how how cute it is. Look at these gold sinks. I mean, it's probably brass, but it's so cute. And so that's the men's, and they have that indicated with this portrait here. And then for the women, they've got this portrait. And then um, they got the nice lights, another gold or whatever brass sink. And um, it's freezing in here, y'all. It's gotta be about, so my dad's gotta be like 40 degrees in here. I don't know why it's so cold in here. But yeah, it's really cute. I like it, I don't know. I guess the bathrooms aren't that nice here, the ones we've experienced so far, so this was like a really nice one. All right, back to the table. I opted for the cod, and y'all, this was the best dish that I have had since I've been in Egypt. And it's not even an Egyptian dish, it's Islamic. Everyone else pretty much got chicken, and everyone's raving about how delicious this was. This was the grilled cod. It was perfectly seasoned and tender. The cream sauce was kind of citrusy, and just a side of rice and veggies. Real simple and real delicious. All right, everybody's got their stuff. All the food's looking really good. Anybody needs a Um, No, I didn't get my sparkling water with the lemon. Dessert. It tastes like sweet cornbread a little bit, like, but soap though, so it's like wet. Right. Um, like with a sweet kind of syrupy mm -hmm. soap. It's pretty good though. I liked it, it's not too sweet. And it's got some, what is that, pistachio on the top, sprinkled. So it's, it's, it's like a really um, subtle, semi-bland dessert if you're into that kind of thing which i am so this is what the outside of the patio looks like we're on the rooftop so it looks like pretty much they just built this structure here off the building and then this was all just going to be flat roof so this is kind of nice here's what it looks like over the edge y'all they got markets and restaurants and stuff down here um did i mention this already maybe i did maybe i didn't this is old cairo um, our driver, um, well our tour guide, Muhammad, was telling us that this is actually the area that um, created the rest of Cairo, so it all kind of expanded from this old Islamic uh, sort of community here. And then the rest of Cairo kind of was developed around it. We got someone back here making the bread for the restaurant. So, hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, it smells so, y'all cannot even imagine the smell. Good bread. It's Good amazing, smell. yes. So she's back here. This? Oh, I tasted it already. I'm full yeah. now. Ooh, I'm full. <laughs> Hello. This smells amazing. Very nice. Hey, how are you? Very nice. Okay, Ziyara. We like it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Such a beautiful place. I really enjoyed that. All right, now we're out in these streets. All right, gotta check out the sniggity snacks, see what y'all got going on. What in the world? What is this? 
Oh, it's an actual uh, piece of bread in here with some, I guess, some cherry filling, strawberry. Okay, strawberry cheesecake. All right, that's what that is. Are you gonna eat it? No, I just wanted to see what they had for snacks. See the different types of labels and brands. Oh, this is different. Flaming hot pounds. Flaming hot hashtags. Oh, they're so silly. I like old Cairo better. I like the pace over here. This is kind of this is more up my alley than any of the other areas we've been in. He's putting the sail up. We're on the Feluca, Feluca boat. There's no motor, it's just sailing. Everybody chilling. He, uh, he took the cloth off of this part so we can get more sun back here because it's a little breezy. The sun feels nice. Our tour lead, Muhammad, gets all the credit for this, you guys. I had reached out to him and asked him to help me coordinate a nice birthday lunch for my dad, followed by a nice cake surprise on a boat. So he found us a wonderful, delicious restaurant and reserved this boat. He went and ordered this really beautiful cake, picked it up for us, and had it delivered here to the boat, and we were able to enjoy it on the cruise. Thank you so much, Muhammad, with Memphis Tours. He did a great job coordinating this. Oh, that's, oh, that's gorgeous. Nice. Oh, yeah. oh my <laughs> goodness, that's gorgeous. Thank you. We have pineapple. Oh, oh, that is so gorgeous. Kiwi, strawberry. Pineapple. Oh, I don't cake. Chocolate. <laughs> I never heard of pineapple <laughs> upside <laughs> down. <laughs> you never heard of pineapple so upside great, down cake? Good. Good. Just for minutes. Happy birthday. Yay. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alex. Happy birthday to you. How old? No, no. I know, right? <laughs> you like, that's good enough. You gotta be watching him blow out your candle before the wind does it. <laughs> Give me your pass and your pass and your right. pass. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, it's time to tip. You'd be like, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> I pay for everything. You must, hey, give us the escort. Now I feel like I'm uh, coming to America. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been like like Tuesday. So by the time Saturday came, they meet us at the airport. She'd say, who, yep. who was that guy passing that money? <laughs> yep. <laughs> We slept very well. Here we are the next day at Heathrow. We had a seven hour layover, but we were prepared this time. We stopped by a place called ELN. It's a cute little shop. They had a lot of um, cafe type of food. So we were able to go in there, get some quick refreshments and some drinks and order some breakfast. I got this dragon fruit drink that was really, really good. I think it was like a mocktail. And then I ordered the um, standard English breakfast. I always do whenever I'm in London, but I didn't really like this one. Everyone else pretty much got burgers and dad got the fish and chips per my recommendation. And he really liked it. We did a bunch of shopping in the airport. Now it's time to board our flight. We had priority boarding with business class. Here are our seats situated right behind the pilot, which I do not recommend because there's a lot of commotion that comes out of this area from the staff. So yeah, this is our first time flying business on an international flight. So we definitely wanted to check it out. I was investigating all these little cubbies and little storage areas. And I discovered the reason that I even chose these seats, which was this reclining position. I need to be able to lay flat y'all. There's a full pillow and blanket, very soft. There's a bag with toiletries and just a bunch of little Little compartments and lights and little things just to make you more comfortable I guess I was starting to realize why people in business class take so long to get off the plane because they're probably checking all these compartments to make sure they didn't forget anything I for one did appreciate the storage and also these Bang & Olufsen headphones which had pretty good sound I didn't know where to plug them though I had to search for the input but I finally figured it out and then we got nice and settled they brought us drinks you can tell this whole thing was designed with comfort in mind rather than luxury here's a quick look at the menu just so you guys can check it out for those of you who have never flown international 
international business class before. For those of you who have, this ain't for you. <laughs> this was our first experience, but we did get to choose our meals well in advance of the flight, so we already knew what we were eating. They had good movie selections, and I decided to watch Teal, which was not a good idea because it was a little too emotional for me, so I um, kind of lost my appetite a little bit. But anyway, everyone was pretty much snuggled in their blanket, except for Anthony. He's the only one who didn't want to snuggle in the blanket. They brought us warm towels for our hands right before serving us some snacks, and those nuts were nice and warm and delicious. And here's the starter for dinner. It's like a shrimp dish with a salad and some pretzel bread. The shrimp was probably my favorite out of the savory options. I did opt for the salmon and I really didn't like it too much. I just, I don't think salmon should be served on a plane. There's just no way to get the temperature right. Dessert was really good. It was like a chocolate mousse cake. After dessert and a couple more glasses of sparkling water, I went ahead and let my seat all the way back and went to sleep. Y'all, I never knew an international flight could be this comfortable. From this day forward, I will always budget to fly business. Hey you guys, all right, it's been days. I've been home for days. I just haven't had a chance to come on here. Y'all, I came back from Egypt with a cold, so I was recovering for the last couple days. I'm just glad it wasn't something more serious because it totally could have been. But I was talking to my manager just this afternoon. I was working on the video footage and I was explaining to her how we were around so many people when we were in Egypt, whether it was getting through the airport, on the plane, or just being on the ground there. There's just tons of people all the time compact and so you know ended up getting sick and I guess I'm not surprised but yeah <laughs> so I've been just kind of laying around for the last couple of days haven't been able to come on here and talk with you guys I was really going through it but um, we're better now and I finally was able to unpack and get my laundry and stuff done and all that so I wanted to pop in really quick at the end and kind of give you guys um, a brief kind of summary of the time um, we spent during this trip and then just kind of talk to you guys about some key things that I think we need to discuss. So first and foremost, I wanna let you guys know about the travel agency that put all this together for us. I actually found them online when I was searching, you know, um, travel agent for Egypt and they were one of the top rated to pop up. I think they had like something like, you know, 20,000 online reviews and they had like four and a half stars and that sort of thing. But let me just tell you guys a little bit more feedback on that. So when we were on the trip, I was explaining that I thought they did a pretty good job, but that it wasn't really like any kind of fancy luxury experience. Um, it was just a lot more practical, which is still the case. I still feel that way. But where my opinion changes a little bit is in dealing with uh, some of the financials um, that went into this trip, right? So um, there was the travel agent and then there was me. and. I'm the one like facilitating people making payments for the trip and all that and I was keeping my, keeping my own uh, separate records in like an Excel spreadsheet like it was very detailed y'all I had the formulas and stuff in there I was keeping track of like everyone's total balance because everyone's balance was different because um, every group was a different size and then there was some discounts applied because there were children and special needs people so I was keeping track of everyone's individual balances and I'm so glad I did that y'all came in handy so so much throughout this process because when we got down to the end it was like the numbers weren't adding up quite right and I was able to go back and reference and say hey you know you know I have this person's receipt it says this whatever so I'm glad I kept those records um, but for everyone that wouldn't be like a practical uh, measure everybody doesn't want to go through all of that especially if you have a really big group so that might be one like red flag you know that you you would have to keep track like heavily like almost like a, an accountant right with your trip um with your group finances and you know because there could be discrepancies and there were um but again because i had my own records we were able to fix it and then i was telling you guys also my little sister alex had to cancel her participation um it was months ago but you know she had to cancel and y'all she still hasn't gotten her refund yet for her deposit and you know after the trip finish and we were back here at home I, you know I had to kind of get a little tangy with the travel agent about it and and my sister is very upset and it's, it's it was to a point where we were like okay well should we report it as fraud will that make you guys you know give her her money you know to be fair there were some other um components that were kind of contributing to the delay in her getting her money but still y'all this you know in the end it's like four months later and she still doesn't have her money so those two reasons when it comes to the finances, I would say probably don't, you know, patronize Memphis tours, maybe go with someone else. There's a ton of other agencies. Um, so maybe go with someone else. That, that's just our experience. When it came down to the money, things got a little wonky. And for some people, that's a straight up deal breaker and I don't blame you. But aside from that, you know, the tours and the experience and all that was pretty much up to par. It was like I said, practical. 
So in that sense, you know, I guess it was okay, but it was a little bit of stress on the on the back end, that's all. Um, another thing I wanted to say, y'all, is um, uh, another thing I learned about like being in Egypt is like, you know how you can go to some destinations and you have an option whether or not to do the whole currency switch thing, you know, you go somewhere like, you know, I don't know, the UK or something, and you're like, I don't wanna, you know, pull out, you know, uh, British pounds. I wanna just use my US dollars. You'll be fine for the most part. Like you could just use your card, Nobody's really tripping on the conversion thing or whatever. You know, you go to France, you don't have you don't have to get euros. You know, you could you could get away with using your card for the most part. But then you go up to a place like Jamaica or Mexico, absolutely USD hands down. Like there's no need for any currency switching. You know, you just use your American dollars. Everybody's gonna take it. Everybody's got change. You have nothing to worry about. But somewhere like Egypt is a, a region that I had not experienced before. Like there was a priority for the Egyptian pound. And rightfully so, it just took me by surprise um, a little bit. So that's the one place where I, I would say I regret not doing the big currency switch um, at the bank in the airport and just getting a bunch of Egyptian pounds and just kind of going from there. Because most places we went, they might accept your US dollar, but they might not have no US dollars for change in their drawers, you know? So you might have a 20 and something costs $5, you got to pay $20 because they ain't got no change, you know? And a lot of places didn't take cards because they either didn't have the machines to swipe the card, I think it was an economic issue there, or the machines were down because of the internet access. They wasn't reliable enough internet. So you really needed to have the Egyptian pounds on the ground in Egypt. So that's just as a tip. So when you get to that airport and you're like me and you're kind of like, well, should I go and do, you know, the currency switch, you know, or whatever, let me just take it from me. You, Yeah, you want to do it. Because it was a huge kind of nuisance, the whole like money thing. It was a, it was a, it was a nuisance to not have um, the Egyptian pounds. Oh, and remember I was telling you guys um, that Egypt was on like the European um, electric plug uh, platform. So while that's true, um, I, I wanna also make a point to point out that if you guys ever make the trek for the first time and you've got a layover somewhere, which you likely will, because I don't know that there are direct flights into Egypt from the United States, get a plug for the place where you have that layover. Because I knew we were gonna be stopping in the UK but the layover is only supposed to be like two hours or whatever, but you have to accommodate for the chance for delays. And we definitely had a serious delay on the way back. And I was without um, a plug. Um, and then, you know, your phone dies, your laptop dies, whatever. Just to be on the safe side, get a plug for wherever that layover is gonna be, okay? And so I actually have these UK plugs um, already here from previous times I've been to the UK, but I didn't bring them because I didn't think I needed to. So we had to end up buying them in the airport. They were only $6.50, but it could have been free had I just brought the one I already had here. So just as a tip for you guys, wherever that layover is, figure out what type of plugs, you know, that region uh, can accommodate and just, just bring that so you're not, um, you know, stuck with a dead device. Oh yeah, and finally, I just wanted to just throw this in there, that um, sometimes when you go to new places and you find that they are like obsessed with American culture and they have like all this American music, American movies and all this stuff. Well, Egypt, uh, from my experience, wasn't like that. I, I didn't hear any American music the entire time we were there. Well, I heard one song. When we were on the boat, they were playing um, one Michael Jackson song, just one. That's the only American music I had heard, and I wanna say that that song was like one of the Jackson 5 songs, so it wasn't even something like current. So I definitely got my feel of the music that they like there. I heard some songs that were pretty good. I actually was able to look some stuff up when I got back here and added some stuff to my playlist because I actually enjoyed uh, some of the pop songs that we had listened to over there, but none of it's in English, so I didn't really know what they were talking about, but the subtitle showed me that it was really like pop content, right? Um, they were talking about like being a boss and like having a good party time and all that. So it's the same stuff, it's just packaged differently. But that was another thing that I noticed. I'm like, oh, they don't, they don't care about our music over here. I didn't hear nothing. But I want to share with you guys some of the souvenirs that I brought back. Um, I'm not typically a souvenir kind of girl, but I felt um, a little bit of pressure <laughs> from some people back home to bring some stuff back to them, people like Martina. Um, basically making requests, like I want this, this, and bring me this stuff back. 
because she had never been to Egypt and everything. So I did bring back some souvenirs for other people, but not so much for myself because I don't really do that. I'd rather go shopping there and then whatever I buy, I'll consider that a souvenir. Like even if it's like an outfit or, you know, something designer or whatever, I'll, that'll be my souvenir. But I don't be liking to get like magnets for the refrigerator or things like that. I don't usually do that. It's just me. But let me show y'all uh, some of the stuff that I got. I'm just going to scooch y'all over here because we are kind of in the shadows, okay, a little bit. So I got in this little sucker. <laughs> I don't even remember where I got this, but it looked so cute, um, like a blood orange sucker. She's into lollipops these days. So I got her that, y'all. And then I also got for her this T-shirt. Got some cute little cartoon camels. It says Egypt. Um, me and Anthony have like this little you know, unofficial tradition that whenever we go out of town and Ian has to miss days at school, uh, she returns to school the next day um, with a t-shirt from the place that we went to visit, whether she was with us on the trip or not. So we always do that, we get her a t-shirt. And then I also got her this cute little gown. I think this is called a kaftan. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, so cute, y'all. I could not resist, she looks so cute in this. It's got this little pocket here and this nice um, print with the little pom-poms on there. Super, super cute. Even has the pom-poms on the sleeves. So she can wear this, I guess, to bed. Not really, because it's kind of, this part is a little bit bulky. But just like a lounge thing for like around the house or whatever, I already put it on her. She looks adorable. I got Alex this t-shirt here. You know what I mean? And then it's got some hieroglyphics. Anywho, I'm gonna probably, I'm trying to see if I can visit her today. Um, but if not, I'll get it to her very, very soon. And then I kind of, I kind of got her this too, because I felt like this would look good, like on one of the shelves in her office. So it's uh, King Tutankhamen, and it's got some carvings. Uh, it's a nice uh, wood structure. It's got that nice finish on there, that coating. So I figured I'd get her this, and perhaps. Um, this thing here that might look good on her shelf. It's the uh, Giza pyramids. And then we have um, the Sphinx right here on the end. Oh, it's not showing up too good, but yeah, this is like a kind of stone uh, figurine. I don't know, I figured she could put it on her shelf. And you guys, I might, I might be more open to souvenirs if I had like an office with shelves and things I could put stuff on. But the way that my house is right now, I don't really have anywhere to put stuff like this, so I don't typically go for it. For Martina, I wanted to get her this cute cat figure. Can y'all see that? This is made out of marble, so this is very heavy. And um, I got a really good price on it. It says Egypt right here in the front, carved in. And this one does have some hieroglyphics carved on the base here. But you guys, Martina is a cat person. Like, she, she's a cat lady. Um, I'm the dog lady, she's the cat lady, so she would love this, right? She actually absolutely identifies with like ancient Egypt and, and their obsession with, with cats uh, in a major way because she is one of those people I am absolutely not, y'all. I, I, I don't have any kind of affection for cats. Sorry to all the cat lovers out there. Martina also loves magnets, so I got her this one. And then the guy just threw in like these extra magnets of some images of Aswan and the Nubian village and stuff. So I just grabbed those. I'll probably give her those as well. She loves magnets, y'all. For myself, <laughs> when we were in um, uh, the Heathrow Airport, you know, they got the nice stores and stuff in there. I did go in Louis Vuitton, just out of boredom and just being like, oh, let me see what's in here. I had tried on some sandals and stuff that I ended up not getting, but I did end up, end up getting these earrings. Let me see if I can open this and show y'all which ones I got. You guys know how everyone has like those little hoop ones with the big LV on there. Everybody has those. So I was looking at those and I'm like, oh, they're cute. And then when I tried them on, you know, put them up to my ear, I was like, mm, you know, it just kind of reminds me of like, you know, those beauty supply hoops. And I was like, I don't know if I'll wear these a lot. I probably won't wear them that much. But I think I'll wear these. Super tiny, y'all. These are like little studs. Um, but I'm just gonna pull out one. You guys can hear I'm all nasally. So here they are. They lay flush to the earlobe. So cute, it's just LV and these are brass. So it kind of has that gold reflection. Yeah, pretty cute. The girl was telling me like, yeah, you can wear these like night to day. You know, you get more wear out of them than the hoops and blah, blah, blah. 
but uh, I just like them because they're really simple and I think it'll add like a nice cute little, you know, glam look to like a sporty look or, you know, like she was saying, you could dress it up too. So we'll see how I end up wearing those, who knows? And then I went by Gucci and they had some cute sneakers up there. So I got me a pair of those. Check it out, they got that nice purple, the giant double G's, and then the classic Gucci stripe, which matches the stripe that's on my tote bag that I have, and so I'm like, I'm definitely gonna be wearing these together because I am tacky. <laughs> I thought that'd be cute, like a cute sporty summer look. I'm like, these are gonna be my summer pregnant shoes. And the thing about buying these kind of designer goods uh, overseas is that it's always gonna be cheaper, even with the, the currency conversion, because um, there's no import export fees because that stuff is made over there and um, so there's no extra taxes and all that so you always end up paying a, at least a little less like i feel like anytime i've bought designer items overseas it's always been at least 250 dollars cheaper than getting it over here because it's made there you know and then yeah we brought back these um little toiletry bags from our flight it's a nice sturdy vinyl bag that you could use again to pack toiletries for like a weekend trip so that's pretty much it, you guys. That's it. That's the totality of our trip to Egypt. I know these videos were rather long and kind of drawn out, but you know what? Sometimes that's how it goes when you have a ton of footage. It was a really long vacation, so I wanted to make sure I captured everything and gave you guys kind of a comprehensive overview to help some of you guys out. For some of you who may be planning a trip like this, or just curious as to how this kind of stuff goes, because it's not all peaches and candy. Um, you know, there are plenty of hiccups that go into this type of planning, this type of execution. So I just like being able to share the comprehensive story because it's so beneficial, you know? So I thank you guys so much for watching um, this video all the way to the end. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions or what have you. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video. All right, Mwah. bye.